Hello, I'm Ben. I'm a consecrated brother in the Shemenov community. I'm Anglican, and in this short video, I'm going to introduce the Anglican Communion. So the Anglican Communion has its roots in England and the English Church. Until the 16th century, the English Church was in communion with Rome. It was Catholic. But in 1534, it separated. This separation had several causes, but the main one was the question of who had power and control over the English Church. For the king at the time, King Henry VIII, this was a power that ought to have been his, and he resented the influence that the Pope had over this aspect of English life. He therefore decided that the English Church would separate from Rome, and he made himself head of the new independent church. This was all happening just a few years after the Reformation had begun in Europe in 1517, and ideas from the Reformation started to arrive in England. This meant that the new independent English church became more Protestant. It then, for a few years around the middle of the 16th century, returned to Catholicism and was again in communion with Rome, before finally separating from Rome for a second time and coming to an arrangement which incorporated elements of both Catholicism and Protestantism. This continues to be a characteristic of Anglicanism today. We have, for example, bishops, priests and deacons reflecting the Catholic influence, but there are also Protestant influences, for example, in our theology. It's also reflected in the range of worshipping styles, some of which uh, are very liturgical, close to the liturgy of the Catholic Church, and other styles which are closer to what one might find, for example, in an evangelical church. So how did this church, with its origins in England, come to be present around the world through the Anglican Communion? Well, it's closely linked to the history of Britain and to the growth of the British Empire. As the empire grew, the church was taken with it, first of all by missionaries, and then as these overseas churches grew, with the appointment of bishops and the formation of dioceses. Today, although the Anglican Church, the Anglican Communion, exists in many different countries, its presence is strongest in countries that were once part of the British Empire. For example, the typical Anglican today is in fact a woman in her 30s living in sub-Saharan Africa. Today, the Anglican Communion is organised into provinces, of which there are 41. Each of these provinces is led by a primate, who is an archbishop. And each of these primates is in communion with the Archbishop of Canterbury, who is the first among equals of the primates, and who acts as a figure of unity for the whole communion. For decision-making, there is no central decision-making body for the Anglican Communion. Instead, decisions are taken by each province. This means that the best way of thinking of the Anglican Communion is as a family of independent churches that are in communion with each other. One historical figure uh, from the Anglican Church that I would like to mention is C.S. Lewis, the writer. His works, Mere Christianity and the Screwtape Letters in particular, uh, are, continue to be influential in the Anglican Church and more broadly uh, throughout the Christian world. But he's perhaps best known for his Narnia stories, which with their retelling um, of the Christian story, continue to capture the imagination of all generations. To finish, I would like to mention a prayer point, which is for the Lambeth Conference. This is a meeting of bishops from around the Anglican Communion, which will take place in summer 2022. It's the first such meeting to take place since 2008, and it will help to shape the future of the Anglican Communion for the decade to come. Your prayers for this meeting would therefore be very much appreciated. Thank you.